we just got some very good news for the markets that i imagine the markets will eat up on monday and that should fare well for amc stock here in this video that's what we are going to talk about we are also going to be going over all of the other data that you guys need to know the ortex data the stocko tracker data because if you guys have not seen my last video we are more prone to see a gamma squeeze this week than we have seen in months we're going to go over the max pain the option flow sediment and i do want to talk about when shorts will cover whether it is on the downside what price would they lock in some of their profits or potentially will they ever cover will they have to see the price of the stock squeeze them out to cover on their short positions i'm very excited to get into this video so i don't want to waste any of your guys's time the only thing that i ask is that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already and also get yourself those free stocks links down below in the description with weeble mumu and public right now mumu is doing a special promotion just for you guys sign up deposit one dollar get three free stocks and also get an additional free share of neo upon your deposit clearing also on top of that if you guys want to join the trading community link down below in the pinned comment nonetheless let's get into this video so amc on friday had a very rough day down 6.66 percent in regular trading down 0.42 percent in after hours so we were down over seven percent in total on friday not a good day there was pain across the board a firm down 15 percent DraftKings down substantially paypal square everything i own was down substantially even sofi was down about 10 percent and amc did better than a lot of the other stocks in my portfolio why is that I, I think it's simply due to the fundamental business that is behind amc there's a stock and then there's the business the business of amc is getting much better the stock price is falling much the same way and i hate to compare these two companies but amazon in 2000 you know jeff bezos said the company was only getting better but the stock price was going down eventually they will come together and you will see that correlation again that's what's going to happen with amc as well as each blockbuster movie comes out throughout 2022 i think it's only inevitable that the share price will reflect what the business is doing and i think it goes to show that there's a lot of fundamental support under 15 dollars per share so long story short i don't think the stock is going to be under 15 dollars per share for a long period period of time now we know that amc as well as the broad markets they trade off of momentum for the most part it could take a while before the actual share play share price is reflective of what the fundamental outlook of the markets look like or what a individual business looks like so that's where this good news comes into play it says ukraine Zelensky says some optimism out optimism about talks with russian officials ukrainian president vladimir Zelensky or vladimir Zelensky on saturday expressed some optimism about recent discussions between ukraine and russian representatives in quote they have started talking about something not just throwing ultimatums Zelensky said at a press conference uh, according to uh, nbc news i believe that this is fundamentally different approach and it should be so he called for a peace process the end of the war process Zelensky said it would need to begin with a ceasefire he added that some leaders have been filled in on the communications between russian and ukrainian parties quote those who are in contact with the russian leader have have this and they need to speak up he said i know that the signals from there are not in bad ter terms of the proposals that came from us i uh, sorry the the english here little bit choppy when it's in quotes just because uh Zelensky you know he speaks English but not the greatest so you know it's just kind of a little hard to understand nonetheless it looks good and that's definitely a step in the right direction after all Russia is getting slaughtered over there losing 12,000 people so far that's double what we lost during the 20-year war on terror in just two weeks and they've really only took one major city so uh you know it makes sense on both sides to try to come to some kind of agreement we'll have to see if that actually materializes over the next two days until the markets do open uh 
but it looks good. And I think the markets will latch onto this like they did the last time there was a 12 hour ceasefire and we'll probably see a very bullish move in the markets. Now it says Germany, Schultz and France, Macron call on Putin to ceasefire. And uh, this is interesting as well, because a lot of people have called on Putin to ceasefire to stop the conflict, at least temporarily. That hasn't really went anywhere. So I would just take that with a grain of salt. Now it says right here, a little bit of bad news. Western arms convoy to Ukraine are legitimate targets for Russian forces, official sets official says and this is really escalating the situation if they start to target uh americans here yes you are in a conflict zone but people are not going to like that and according to my twitter i did just do a poll and uh you know if they start to attack americans if you see a chemical weapon use or a tactical nuke uh so far 13 people have said, yes, we would support NATO destroying Russia and Ukraine if Russia uses a chemical weapon or a tactical nuke. Nobody has said no. So definitely go uh, check out my Twitter down below, linked in the pinned comment as well, and go vote on this. I'm uh, just curious where people's heads stand as far as that is concerned. But that's really the good news here. You know, Zelensky saying it sounds fundamentally different. So that is a, a really change of tone from really we haven't seen so far. Now, as far as the specific AMC data, uh, the option flow on Friday was 55% positive. So a majority positive, 54 orders totaling $14.29 million. That is a very high dollar amount. In the past week, We've seen 151 orders totaling 35.97 million with a positive order value of 47%. So what we've seen on Friday was essentially half, almost half, of all of the dollar, the week's dollar amount of options placed in AMC on Friday. I, th I think that's uh, definitely showing a lot more optimism there, but there's a lot more artificial shorting that happened on Friday than in most days. You see a lot of $15 puts, just a ton of them, and you will see that on the Stonko Tracker data as well, and as we look at the option chain, that that is what is going on. A lot of artificial shorting activity. There was actually 27,000 contracts that were traded at that $15 put price. So let's get into the max pain here, and that is $20 per share by the end of this week, by March 18th. And if you guys are unfamiliar, the max pain is the price at which the stock would cause financial losses for the largest number of option holders at expiration. Now, the market makers, they take about 90% of the back end of the options that you tend to hold because there's not always going to be somebody that is willing to sell a put or sell a call so the market makers have to come in and sell that put sell that call and that's why you can actually see those gamma squeezes and if we look at the actual numbers here 3,000 calls that are in the money 343,000 calls that are out of the money that's a lot of contracts that are out of the money that is actually less than one percent of the total call activity that is held in open interest for this week is in the money that's the lowest ratio we have seen in months and it's not always to do with you know how many contracts are on the expiration but how many are in the money relative to out of the money this week you have a large number of contracts but you also have a very small percentage of those total call contracts that are in the money so if you start to see the stock price going up you're going to see a lot of calls go into the money very fast same thing on the put side and this is almost more bullish in my personal opinion you have 112,000 puts that are in the money 38,000 puts that are out of the money and if you go ahead and look at the actual option chain here you can see that like i said in the last video you have roughly you know forty thousand calls that are that would go into the money if the share price of amc went to twenty dollars per share that's about four million shares that would have to be almost instantly hedged for 
considering the very low premium here and uh, the low days to expiration. It would pretty much have to be instantly hedged for. Uh, same thing on the put side. If the price of the stock went to $20, you would see all of these puts have to be instantly de-hedged for. So that would mean the market makers would have to go out and buy stock on the open market to hedge out their put obligations. And look at that, 27,000 for volume at the $15 strike on Friday alone. Uh, almost 20,000 contracts that are held in open interest in people's brokerage accounts. So if we could push past 15, then I really think we could go to $20 per share. And if we do see some kind of bullish reaction on Monday, if not after Fed Jerome Powell on Wednesday, which I think is almost guaranteed to happen, if you guys have not heard my spiel on that and why I think that is going to be the case, why I think we're going to see a bullish reaction after Fed Jerome Powell, go ahead and check out the last two videos I made going over that whole situation. But nonetheless, on the put side up until the $20 strike, if we do see the price of AMC go to $20 per share, you have about 60,000 contracts that would have to be de-hedged for, would have to be pretty much hedged for. And that would consist of buying on the open market. That would be six 60,000 plus 40,000, that's 100,000 contracts. That would mean 10 million shares roughly would have to, be, have to be bought by the market makers. Now, if we can clear that in a day or two, that's substantial. Why? Because we are seeing very low volume on any given day. 25 million shares traded hands in the three trading days ago. Uh, and two trading days ago. On Friday, we seen 29 million for volume, but very low volume days in general, but it really dropped off of a cliff last week. So that would be about half of a day's volume just going in from market makers having to hedge out these uh, this obligation on the option chain. So I think that looks very good. Now, the question you guys have probably been waiting this whole entire video to hear, would the short sellers cover on their short position at a certain price to the downside or to the upside? And when you're talking about the downside, the simple answer is no. It's just like when you have a winning option trade, when you are making money, that's almost the hardest part to sell out. When do you sell out? Because you're making all of this money pretty consistently from the eyes of an AMC short seller, at least from my analysis, the average short position is likely in the 25 to $30 uh, dollar range or even $35 range. And I said this months ago, then you've made a substantial amount of money. The last thing shorts are going to do is to cut that off when they want to push the stock down as low as possible. They probably don't even realize the business is getting much better, that these fundamental valuations are supported at these levels. So I don't really think there's a certain price to the downside shorts would cover. If there was a price, they would be covering at that $15 level. But what are they doing? They're continuing to artificially short the stock as well as just naked short the stock. At the, look, the $15 puts. I, I think this... The story is is pretty clear here. So I, I don't think they would cover at a certain price to the downside. I think it's only when the trade starts to go against them. When the price of the stock starts to get up to that 20, 25, $35 level is when they start to cover. Much the same of when you have a winning options trade, you really don't want to sell out. But when you start to lose money, you tend to rethink that situation and you do tend to uh, sell out or at least take some level of profits. The thing with shorting though, if you have one of my favorite strategies, I'll buy five or 10 options. Once I'm up 50%, I'll sell out half of them, keep the rest for free. You can't really do that when you're talking about a short position. If you short a hundred stocks or a hundred shares and uh, you're up on it, you're up 50%, you can't really sell out 50% of your short position and then uh, you know just ride the rest as free profits because there's an unlimited amount of risk on that short position the stock price could go to a thousand and then you would completely blow up that whole position so it's a little bit different you either got to cover on the whole thing or you just 
let it ride and shorts obviously do not want to cover on that short position as you can see from the option activity as well as just the short interest at 20.59 percent current shares that are sold short of 106.06 million shares cost bar max of 2.32 percent and the utilization is at 100 percent days to cover at 2.59 so these numbers are not reflective of shorts that are using common sense that are going to get out of their positions at their at the stock's fundamental valuation. So it's pretty clear on that aspect. Like I said, to the upside, shorts will eventually get out when their position does start to go against them. Really in that 20 to $35 price, I would really like to say 25 to $35 price, but who knows, it could happen at the $20 price if we do get a lot of bullish momentum. Maybe the Fed does U-turn on us and starts to become more dovish on Wednesday. That would cause a lot more pressure on the hedge funds and institutions uh, nonetheless. Now, as far as the technical analysis is concerned, that $15 price is going to be very important. Like I have called out, all of these $15 puts that we are seeing, if we can get above $15, I think personally we're clear to go to about $20 per share if the Fed gives us that dovish tone like I I think he will and he can kind of give us that room to rally then i think we're going almost straight to 20 within the next following days thursday and friday after that fed meeting now there is going to be important levels like the 20 day simple moving average that is at 17 dollars 32 and then 1862 is the 50 day moving average we will have to break out above that there will be some resistance there if we can then you're going to $20 per share or even possibly higher than that, depending on what the Fed says. The MACD is pretty neutral and the RSI is approaching oversold territory at 35.68. So situation here, in my opinion, looks very bullish. You've really already seen all of the pain and losses that you are going to here in the short and midterm. In the very short term, within a week to week basis, we could go lower than 15, but I really think we're just going to elastic band pop back up above 15. Like we've seen over the last couple of months, the stock price is obviously fundamentally justified at $15 per share because it is holding that level very, very nicely. So that is going to be all for this video. If you guys found value out of it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And also get yourself those free stocks. Links down below in the description for Weeble, Moomoo, and Public. Moomoo, great promotion over there. Weeble as well. Sign up, deposit $100 and get 10 free stocks you definitely want to take advantage of that come join the trading community link down below in the pinned comment and follow me on twitter and make sure to go uh check out that poll i just did uh, cast your vote let me know where you guys sit as far as that is concerned so you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and i'll see you in the next one